morning, everybody. I'm happy to report that the District of Columbia is on the cutting edge of innovative food policy. We've passed ambis ambitious legislation uh, and have had uh, multiple initiatives to expand access to nutritious food, to fight hunger, to build a local food economy. But I'm also happy to note that the government has been able to join hands with groups like uh, this and others because we have to do this all together. Um, in terms of what we've done on the government level, uh, we've been able to ensure uh, progress has been able to go forward. We've been able to pass significant pieces of legislation. And I want to thank uh, Food Tank uh, for giving us the chance to have this interaction. Because the fact of the matter is, we are doing much more on a local level than could ever be done sort of nationally with a single policy. The uh, initiatives that we're engaging in are really crafted for local economies, and they're uh, adapted to local economies, and they require local solutions, though we will interact with one another, and we will grow from one another by getting ideas from, from each other. Um, We've done an awful lot in the District of Columbia, but what we've done started out, uh, in my own case, uh, with the district, uh, sort of um, in a narrow sense. I was, uh, when I was first elected in 2006, I began to notice more and more the issue about obesity among children. When I would go to schools, I would see the, the children in the schools when I would go out you know, to look at some uh, bad housing, because I had jurisdiction in that area, I noticed that kids during the summer were inside, you know, and there was one particular vision that st has always stayed with me. We went into this very dilapidated house, and there was a door open uh, to the living room, and you could see into the kitchen and the living room. In the living room were three children, all of whom were about under the age of seven. And this is in the middle of the day, and the sun is shining, it's beautiful outside. And they're set up in front of the TV with a, a big gallon of soda and a big bag of chips. And I could see into the kitchen, and there was a, an elderly grandmother who herself was quite overweight. And I said, you know, we have to do something about this. So in the District of Columbia, my focus was on healthy schools. So I passed the Healthy Schools Act, um, which was an omnibus piece of legislation that has many moving parts. But first and foremost, it raised the nutrition level of the meals in schools. But it also reintroduced real physical education. It had nutrition education. It had school gardens. It had farm to school networks that were created. And in terms of the school gardens, I have to tell you, each year we have an essay contest. And we have kids write essays about what it means to them to work in the garden. And it, for example, Janney Elementary, not only do they have a garden, but they're raising chickens. Um, I was there for lunch, and a side dish that we had was um, mashed sweet potatoes that the children themselves put in the ground, harvested, and then we served them in the cafeteria. When they write these essays each year, I'm telling you, I actually tear up because they talk about how meaningful it was to them, and in their own you know, small way, philosophically you know, um, empowering, for them to re-engage with the earth. Now, that Healthy Schools Act um, was followed by a number of pieces of legislation. Uh, I'm happy to say that I'm the author of most of them. Um, we have the Feed DC Act. It creates a healthy corners program to bring fresh produce to corner stores. Um, it also provides for food carts, you know, at subway stations and, and bus stations. We passed the Healthy Parks Act, applying these rigorous nutritional um, requirements uh, in parks as well as in schools. The Sustainable DC Act allows beekeeping in the district. The Cottage Food Act allows small based food businesses to safely sell their baked goods without going through the expensive, time consuming and extraordinarily bureaucratic uh, food production license ordinarily applicable. The council directs money uh, in the budget to double the value of SNAP benefits at farmers markets. Last year, the council also passed, I'm totally into this uh, titling here, the Healthy Tots Act, um, which applies rigorous nutritional standings, uh, standards rather, uh, to early child care centers. Uh, and in all of these ways, we've been building a food policy, but the legislation has been somewhat piecemeal. And so uh, to sort of 
give it a comprehensive uh, approach to make it more robust and to be able to connect with other entities that are uh, at work in this area as well, um, I decided that we needed something broader. And so I introduced in the council passed the Food Policy Council and Director Establishment Act. Uh, it was just a few months ago. It creates a food policy council and a director who will advocate for positive food policy within the district. And the idea is to take a comprehensive approach to improving our local food system by increasing access to healthy food, supporting our local food economy, and working with the larger community so that we can integrate our efforts. So we want to have a broad, expansive, comprehensive approach to food policy in the District of Columbia. And we want diverse representation on this uh, a board. Anybody available, uh, let me know. Um, and we will divide it into different working groups so that we can look at the whole picture. Now, in terms of that whole picture, sustainable urban agriculture is a key ingredient. And we have uh, passed legislation that uh, you know, requires the government to identify vacant lots that could be candidates for uh, growing food. We've also tried to uh, give incentives to folks for their community gardens and for uh, more you know, um, extensive food production in the district. There are all sorts of things that are possible. Growing food on roofs, growing food you know, along uh, uh, public ways, hydroponics, the possibilities really are um, extraordinary, and we need to exploit them. The um, issue about food policy has to be one that we are all engaged in. And in fact, I'm surprised that we haven't paid more attention to it uh, until now. Food deserts, access to food, and it helps the, uh, you know, the, the local economy. In terms of you know, what we're doing and where we're going, the fact of the matter is that, as I said before, we need to sort of cross-pollinate, to use that expression, among ourselves. Because, as I said, it is largely a local initiative. It spans the globe, but it's locally active. And so each area is doing some things that maybe another area could learn from. And that's why this, this engagement is so important. The District of Columbia and cities in the United States and around the world are having, I would say, something of a renaissance. In the District of Columbia, for example, although it's slowed somewhat, we have been net netting, and I mean netting, a thousand people coming into the district every month. That means that we are now the center, really, of innovation among people who want to come and live in cities. And part of that has to be our food policy. So I hope throughout today and tomorrow, and I want to thank Food Tank, and I want to thank the George Washington University, where, by the way, I'm a law professor. Um, <laughs> just thought I'd mention that. Um, I want to thank them for bringing you, all of you together. And when you all get together, we're all going to be enriched. So this is very exciting, and I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased that I was able to be a part of it. Thank you very much.